Welcome to the Badass Direct Sales Mastery Podcast with your direct sales dom, Jenny Bellinger. Badass Direct Sales Mastery is a podcast for rock star direct sales moms who are determined to make their business kick ass. Jenny will share her knowledge of effective sales and recruiting techniques, tips to get what you want from your business, and will interview direct sales professionals and leaders from various companies. The interviews will give insight to how these rock stars got to where they are and where they plan to grow in the future. And now, the direct sales dom, Jenny Bellinger. Welcome back to another episode of Badass Direct Sales Mastery. I'm your host, your direct sales dom, Jenny Bellinger, helping you whip your business into shape. And today I have with me Dr. Darnielle. Now, Dr. Darnielle is an award-winning CEO and the award-winning CEO of Incredible One Enterprises, LLC, a multi-million dollar business transformation company. Dr. Darnielle is best known for transforming the lives of her business coaching clients, audiences, and live events attendees. Darnielle has one mission, to normalize millions for today's service-based entrepreneur. Fueled by her belief that if you did not come from millions, which... Raise your hand if that's you. I know we can't see you, but we are all there, right? Millions should come from you. She teaches service-based entrepreneurs how to shift from six-figure years to six-figure months in businesses that serve them financially and spiritually. Each year, 20% of her clients make the move to millions, while the remaining 80% grow their business by at least 200% and move closer to their million-dollar company. She's also a philanthropist, and you guys and my badass crew know how important it is to me to have a cause, and hers is one that she's had since she was a child. She's embarking on the development of her own foundation, the Incredible One Foundation, to teach entrepreneurship to the children of incarcerated parents. Dr. Darnielle, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me, Coach Jenny. I'm excited to be here. Oh my gosh. I loved our interview because we started talking uh, on the Bad Girls on Business with Virginia Uh and Michelle. And I'm not even freaking kidding you. I get the book Profit First like two weeks later because it was on recommendation from someone else. And whose name do I see? Me. (laughs) page of the freaking book. And I was like, the universe is telling me something. So I reached out and said, I got to get you on the show. (laughs) Yes. And I'm excited to be here. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. And you do have, it it wasn't in your bio, but you do have a background in direct sales. Um, I do. Yeah. So tell us a little bit. Give us your, in a nutshell, journey through all of business. How did you get from where you started to where you are today? Yeah. So when I graduated from college, instead of going to law school, which was the plan, I decided to go to work. So I started working in a Fortune 500 financial services company. I was there for about 12 years. I progressed entry level to vice president in about three. But one day I literally woke up and I knew that it was my last day working for someone else. And so I went to work on December the 17th, 2004, and I quit my job. I had no idea what I was going to do, but I had started this little Mary Kay Cosmetics business on the side. And so I decided that until I figured out what I was going to do with my life, I would sell my Mary Kay full time. And so within five months, I was picking up my first pink Cadillac. I had become an independent sales director and we just started a journey, which for me lasted about two years. I offspring five sales directors. I was on the track to become a national. And then I realized that's not really what I wanted to do with my life. And so I started down the path to start Incredible One Enterprises. But I had a lot of fun and a lot I attribute to my time in Mary Kay. A lot of what we're going to talk about today, which is that mindset that makes a difference. I had never heard of personal development prior to getting into direct sales. And so being in an environment where thinking about me, thinking in a way that would serve and support me all the time, it really changed my life. And I'm so clear that there would not be an incredible one enterprises if there wasn't first a direct sales company and experience with Mary Kay Cosmetics. Oh, I align with that so hard (laughs) (laughs) because when I started in my own direct sales journey um, in 2010, 
I was a stay-at-home mom. And yeah, I knew education, I'm putting air quotes around education was important, but education had a different meaning for me. It was like college classes or having a degree. It wasn't this personal development side. And it wasn't until I started in my direct sales journey that I began to do the, the personal development too. So, and I love that in the world of direct sales, the more you learn, the more you earn, the more you work on yep. yourself, the more you, you, you build and grow. Right. Uh-huh. So, so now you have worked towards and you now are helping lots of people build businesses that go from six figures to seven figures. Uh-huh. Um, Tell us, what are some of the things that people who are in the direct sales network marketing industry who are approaching six figures or are already doing six figures, what can they start to do to make the shift to the next level? Yeah, I love that question. And there's three things that come to my mind, first and foremost. Number one, I would say, you know, continue to work on your mindset. I always say, you know, you have to wash your mind like you wash your behind. Like, and hopefully (laughs) you're washing it every day. (laughs) If you're not, keep it to yourself, right? So I think the, the what we have to realize is what got us to six figures won't get us to seven. Mm. And I'm sure that if you were to go to whatever, you know, whatever organization you're in, however the career path works, if you go to the person who is at the top level, the level you aspire to, for me, when I was in Mary Kay, that was a national sales director. And if I had a conversation with them about the role that mindset was still playing in their life and in their journey, they would tell me distinctively that understanding that who you become on the journey is evolving, that is the most important thing, like being and becoming the next version of yourself. And sometimes, just like in a GPS where you plug your final destination in, you can't see the next step to take until you've taken the one you've taken. I think it's the same in, in personal development and in mindset work. I can't even begin to think about seven figures it doesn't come into view to me until I'm making six because it's a natural progression from six to be like, well, what's next? Well, what's next is seven. And who do I need to be to get to seven is going to be different who I need than who I needed to be to get to six. And so I would say that that's probably the first thing. I know for me, when I was in Mary Kay, I'll never forget, we were having our, we called it January jumpstart. And it was like a, a mini seminar for all of the beauty consultants in our national area, we would get together. We, there was recognition for the top consultants and the top sales directors. And I remember going to my national sales director at the time, her name was Pam. And I was like, Pam, I want to be on the stage. Coach Danny, don't ask me why I was in a direct selling company trying to be a keynote speaker, but I was. <laughs> and I said, how do I get on the stage? And she says, the women on the stage are the top five women in our national area. So that became my goal because I wanted to get on the stage. And so the question I would ask myself to bring this home for the listeners, who did I need to be, become a top sales director so that I could get on the stage so that I could speak to the people and I became that. So number one would absolutely be continuing to work on your mindset. Number two would be to understand the significance of networking. We called it warm chattering, getting out because your friends and your family will get you started. But your sustenance in your direct sales company is going to come from people you haven't met yet. So Mm -hmm. looking for opportunities to get out and about and to network wherever you are, everywhere you go, you should know your elevator pitch, right? Whatever your little 10 second blurb is about what it is that you do and how you leverage the product that you are selling to help other people solve some problem that they have. You need to know that down cold so that in moments notice, you can share it with someone, hand them your business card and start a conversation leading towards business. So the second thing would be networking and lots of networking. And then the third thing would be to make sure that you are staying abreast of the products and services in your organization. You should know them like the front of your hand. When I was a Mary Kay director, I didn't wear any other skincare or any other color cosmetic. I never wanted to be out on the street and someone say, oh my gosh, that's an amazing eye color. What is that? And I'd say, well, that's MAC. (laughs) <laughs> Whatever. I was always wearing Mary Kay products. So you have to believe you have to believe in, you know, people people say ride or die, ride or die for your product or service, because that is going to breed confidence. And that confidence will become as good as currency for the people that you interact with 
when you know your product like the back of your hand. And so those would be my three tips. Always be working on your mindset, always be networking and know your products and services like you know your name. Yes. Exclamation point on each and every one of those, because we, you know, for my badass crew who've been listening to this show for 200 plus episodes now, they've heard me say a lot of those same things. And Mm y'all, if Dr. Darnielle saying it and she's coaching seven figure earners, you know, it's got to be good. (laughs) Oh, yeah. And before I start, you know, today we work with service based businesses. But when I first started my business coaching, I was working with direct salespeople and I was helping them to get into their pink Cadillac because I had figured out how to do it. And, you know, I earned two in two years. I earned Cadillacs. I, you know, I knew exactly what to do to present the business in a way that would make other people desire it. And so I was teaching people that. Right. So understanding that's why knowing your products like the back of your hand is so important because you're going to have to work on your messaging and you're going to have to be able to have your messaging appeal to different types of people. What I would say when I was in the supermarket would be different than when I would say if I was walking out on, you know, at the park versus what I would say if I was at church. And so knowing the product and knowing what would appeal to the person that I'm having a conversation with, it would be different. And so I think that that is so important to keep that in mind. Absolutely. And I want to point out, because this is something that I don't think I've said in a very long time on the show. So I think it's important to, to point out. Business opportunity is your number one product. Mm, it is the that is true. It is the best thing that you have to position for other people's success and your own at the same mm-hmm. time. It is the perfect win win situation uh, for people is to understand how to position that because, like you said, you were good at figuring out how to position the business. So that others wanted to do it. Mm-hmm. Right. Because that's how you right. earn the Cadillac. That's how Absolutely. you earn the Cadillac. That's how you earn the car. I don't care what company you're with. If they have a car program, recruiting is going to be part of it. Building Absolutely. a team is part of it. And every company that I'm aware of that has a vehicle incentive, a trip incentive, building the team is a part of that. And understanding yeah. how to position that is super important. So let's yeah, jump. and you, I want oh, this before, just because I think this is important to say too, because I don't disagree. And I think that before you start recruiting, you need mm-hmm. to make sure who you're recruiting loves the product. Yes. Because I don't care how many people you bring on. The, you know, the adage was when I was in Mary Kay, a third are working, a third are, you know, looking for to go, looking to go to the next level, and a third are on their way out the door. So if you just make recruiting your focus without making sure that they have a sincere love and appreciation for whatever the product is, the cause, the mission behind it, like they have to know their why and you have to know your why. Because when you know your why, what you're doing has more impact. And so I would say lead with that first and then make it a a natural um, progression to enroll them, to recruit them. I I work the business model. So those of you who are listening right now, I don't care which company you're in, I think you should buck the system and go against what they're telling you to do. Don't just do what they say. They said five chatter, uh, warm chatter, five people a day, call them and book skincare classes. You warm chatter five, you'll book three skincare classes. When you go to hold those three skincare classes, one will recruit. And I promise you, that's what I did. I worked the plan. So, and, And it's parallel to even in the work I do today, six figure and seven figure business owners, they have found a system that is working and they are working the system. Mm, exactly. And and I think one of the interesting trends that I've noticed in direct sales and network marketers is they often see themselves as a little bit rebellious, a little bit different because I'm not doing the corporate thing or if I'm doing the corporate thing, it's just subsidizing my income <laughs> until my business is able to do so um, <laughs> on its own. And so that little bit of rebellion it sometimes shows up as people trying to recreate the wheel, make a new system, build a new system, do a new thing. What's your take on that? Yeah, I think, I mean, I definitely think that there's some truth to that. I mean, I think, you know, there's always truth, right? But I think that it's just not as simple as being a rebel. Like there's a reason that the business model works. There's a reason that the people that are at the top are telling you to do what it is that they do. Because they created, they found the cheat code. And I just think that it's dumb. Sorry, y'all, but it's dumb 
to get into a business model like a direct sales company where they've already proven how it works and try to do something different. Mm. Like, that's just not smart. Why spend your energy that way? It's, it's just so much easier to do what you know to do. It's the same thing that I would say to a coaching client today who's enrolled to work in one of our programs, but then everything we suggest that they do, they say, well, I don't want to do that. I'm like, why did you invest in yourself in this way? Why did you start, you know, selling this particular product, making it about direct sales? If you weren't going to follow the proven business model that guarantees a level of success. Now, we know, and you talked about this just before we started, that the statistics say, I think you said 25 million people are involved in some type of direct sales or network marketing organization Mm -hmm. and business, and very few of them actually become millionaires. I think more people would become millionaires if they follow the system. If they, well, first, before they can follow the system, they have to believe that they are worthy and deserving of millions of dollars. That's the real problem. It's not, can it happen? It's, do I deserve it, right? Most of us were born financially illiterate, even if we come from money. Mm -hmm. Money was taboo. We never talked about it. You don't ask that question. That's being rude. And so we don't know about money. And then we get an opportunity. We make mistakes, right? I mean, I I did a talk yesterday and I talked about how by the time I was 21 years old, I had $40,000 in credit card debt. I went to college without student loan debt, but I got credit card debt instead because no one told me about money. No one told me about credit cards except for a fellow student who said, and I quote, a credit card is layaway you get to take home. Y'all can't see me, but I'm a brown (laughs) girl from the project (laughs) and I understood layaway. And so because I didn't, I didn't understand money. I didn't know if I was even worth having lots of money because the examples of money I saw were you have to work hard for it. And so the thought of having access to money and it being easy, which often when you're in a direct sales organization, the process that you follow is easy. We want to make it harder. And that's why we rebel and and buck buck the system, right? Because it can't be that easy. Like it's not that easy. It can't be, right? That's what we tell ourselves, but it can be that easy and it does actually work. So if you know that you are deserving to be able to make that kind of money to get to the highest level within the organization where you are. That's the starting point. And then you work the system that has already been developed for you to work. Yeah. That is huge. I, I <laughs> hope that the the listener right now is like going back and hitting rewind. <laughs> Listen to that again, guys, because that is huge to have that understanding that, you know, why are you doing this if you're just going to buck the system? Right. And the the piece about deserving the the abundance, right? Uh-huh. Deserving of that. So so let's dig into that piece because okay. I've talked about those kinds of things before in coaching sessions and also in podcast interviews that I've done is talking about deserving and I'm I'm good to say, you know, one finger pointing out three fingers pointing back, like I still work through like literally my Uh word of the year is enough Uh like i'm starting at this point in time with can i just start with being enough okay Uh (laughs) so how do people move from the i'm not worthy i'm not deserving Uh into that what are some of the steps you take with your your clients to get that mindset shift going because it's not is it is it something as simple as a a quick shift or does it i wish (laughs) <laughs> it does take time. You know, I always say, Coach Jenny, no one goes to bed a blunder and wakes up a wonder, right? It's everyone's on a journey. Um, and so often our belief and inability to believe that we are worthy is deep seated. It's we were taught it, not necessarily that someone said to us, you are not worthy, although it's possible depending upon, you know, where you grew up, all of that. Right. But it's not just what we are taught, it's what we, what we catch, right? What is caught. And so if, for instance, I was having a conversation, the talk, when I travel, the talk I do the most is called Mindset for Millions, right? And it's, you know, how, how do you recognize abundant and how do you call in your own abundance, right? Based on wherever you come from. And what I hear invariably almost every single time is, you know, that's just not what I was raised to believe. And so I'm 47. So let me use myself as an example. If when I was a child, 
specifically from being born to the age of seven, who you are going to become as an adult is being formed because we all come here with just the subconscious mind. Our conscious mind comes into being based on what we learn, what we take in, what we observe. We're literally a sponge. We are the hard drive on a computer before the programming is put in. And so whatever happens between birth to the age of seven, that sets in motion the tapes that we play for the rest of our life. And so if you were like me, raised by a single bitter mom who told us that we were going to be just like our no good father, Mm. then it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy, right? Like that's a go-to, right? Being taught that you have to work hard for money or money is only for needs, not wants or desires. That's what I was taught. And so when faced with an opportunity to desire something, my worth was put into question because I was told that if it was something I wanted or desired, I didn't deserve that. Mm. So I'm saying all of this to say every single one of us has those, those beliefs, those lessons that we were taught specifically around money and abundance that we have to figure out first what they are. So the first step to answer your question in a very long-winded way is to retrace the pattern. So for those of you who are like, okay, that sounds great. How do I do that practically? Take a sheet of paper, turn it landscape, number it one to seven, eight to 14, 15 to 21, 22 to 28, so forth and so on, up into your age. I want you to go as far back as you possibly can In those first seven years, what were the first memories that you were given about money and abundance? I first learned about money when I was sick. I was at the grocery store with my mom. I put, I picked something up. And when we got to the register, I put it up there thinking that she would purchase it for me. Well, I was met with a backhand. And my first lesson about money, that money is only for what you need. She said, we don't have money for that. Money is only for what you need. So even today, as a 47-year-old multimillionaire, I still find myself, my husband catches me all the time saying, oh, but but I believe that. (sighs) It's muscle memory. I'm saying all of this for you guys that are listening to say, it is way easier said than it is done. So you, but you first have to identify what is the belief that is limiting you and hindering you. Once you identify the belief, the second step is to begin to question the belief. Is it possible that this belief is not really true? And if so, how so? Right? I can think about times in my life where I got access to things that I didn't need, but I wanted them. Did the heavens fall out? Did my house burn down? Did I, you know, no. The world went on and I had, an, I had a want or a desire. So now I have proof that the belief that I held isn't 100% the truth. So I continue to question and look for evidence to support that what I used to think is the truth is actually not the truth. And then I can create a plan of how, now that I have this new knowledge and information, I can chart a different path and I can make different decisions and do different things that support my understanding and knowledge that that is really not a belief that I need to continue to hold. It's a process. It's a process that that goes faster with coaching or therapy in some cases, right? Because you might need to heal some of the trauma that is associated with your life experience that is keeping you from the things that you want. Some of that can be undone in coaching. Some of it you do need more serious help. But I think that that's the first step. I think at least acknowledging the patterns and beginning to ask yourself if there, if it was possible that that wasn't the truth and what would that look like? Or what, do you have any examples that support that? I think you can do that. You can go through that exercise, that exercise on your own and begin to open up an opportunity to be brought into a new belief or to rewrite, right? One of the things I say all the time is what holds us back are the stories that we tell ourselves. So if I'm telling myself the story that I don't deserve it, I'm not worthy of it, that's going to hold me back. But when I get to the point where I can reframe that story, because I now have some new powerful information, everything begins to change. That is why personal development and the amount of personal development that exists inside of the direct sales space is so important. And that's why it's there. Because 
the powers that be, right? They know that most of us, we, we, you know, we're all born in some form of brokenness. And, you know, broken crayons still color. So your brokenness doesn't exclude you from the ability to be a gift to someone else. It's a solve someone else's problem. But you have to learn how to mend that brokenness so that you can be a whole version of yourself showing up to offer impact to someone else through your direct sales organization, through your own company, if that's your desire. But we all have to do that work and find our worthiness because we are worthy. I believe, just as the Bible says in Genesis 1 and 26, that we were all created in the image and likeness of God. And I believe that whether you believe it or not, not you specifically, Coach Jen, but any person, I believe it and whether you believe it or not. And because I believe it to be true and because I believe that you were created in God's image and likeness, then I know that there is power and worth in you. And so whenever I'm given an opportunity to support and edify someone to see themselves the way that I believe God sees them, I'm going to invite them to do so. I'm going to share that with them. That's, you know, part of the reason why I wanted to share this on your podcast, because you are not what you've been through. You are still God's beautiful creation. And because you're his creation, that comes with a level of worthiness and that worthiness And that desire that you hold, the word desire in Latin means of the father. I mean, you didn't give yourself that desire. It means God created you with that desire. He placed it in you. So you wanting to have access to more is because that's what God desires for you in the first place. Oh, that is powerful. And interestingly enough, what came up for me during that is there's a class that I've been teaching since, gosh, I think late 2019, early 2020. And one of the slides in that class is you need to shift your belief and believe that you are worthy. And one of the things that I say is, even though I can't see you, because sometimes it's a it's a it's a Zoom room where people have their cameras turned off. Half of the people have them on, half of them have it off. I can't even see you. I don't know you from Adam. And yet I know just because you are here, just because you exist, you are worthy. And the the aha moment I had is I was saying that to everybody else but myself. Mm. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, that's good. <laughs> oh, that's so good. I have chills right now. <laughs> Me so too. Good. I was like, oh, that's powerful. Okay. And that that came from the inspiration of what you said. So yeah. it was meant to be. So absolutely. And And I know one of the things that you have coming up that is going to be incredibly valuable for anybody who has on their dream board, who has on their vision board, who has on their their gold digger board, whatever you want to call it. I've heard them (laughs) all called different things. If you've got six figures, seven figures on in your future that you are looking to create, one of the things that I know you've got coming up that could help people is you've got a book coming out. I do. Tell I do. us about the book. So the book is called Move to Millions, The Proven Framework to Become a Million Dollar CEO with Grace and Ease Instead of Hustle and Grind. And it's based on our Move to Millions method. What I love about the method, Coach Jenny, is that it doesn't matter if you're a direct sales person or if you have your own business. The methodology works, right? It's got five pillars. Success mindset. We've been talking about that, right? Mm -hmm. No matter what you are doing, you have got to believe that you are worthy of it and can continue to take action in the direction of of what you believe you are worthy of. Um, Strategy. Every single company, direct sales or otherwise, needs a clear strategy. So for us, strategy is the packaging of the problem that you saw, the pricing, the positioning, the promotion and the profit. So whether I'm selling lipstick or I'm selling coaching. I need to package it up to solve a problem, right? What is the problem that your organization's products and services solve for other people, right? How is it priced? And of course, if you're in direct sales, you're at least getting it at wholesale. So that means you make an, a moniker of profit every time you sell it if you don't institute your own discount, right? And then how are you positioning? How, how are you telling people about the product and service? And how are you promoting it? How are you getting it into more people's hands? That strategy. Then from there, we move into sales. Well, we all know sales, right? Mary Kay Ash said, nothing happens until somebody sells something. So when you actually sell, and in, in my world for service-based businesses, I want them to do leverage sales. Here's something else that parallels in direct sales. Well, I can do a 
one-on-one facial. But what I always loved to do were skincare classes with three or more people. I was holding a leveraged sales event, right? So whenever you can sell one to many, you're going to reduce the amount of time it takes you to get to whatever the goal is. So ask yourself, how can I take my product or service based on the direct sales or networking company, marketing company that I'm in, but how can I sell one to many? How can I put leveraged sales in place? From there, we move into your systems. What are the systems? Systems make your success and your millions predictable. So what are the systems that I'm going to use? The processes, the process flows, the, the frameworks, the standard operating procedures. Some of that, when you're in direct sales, it's given to you. Some of it, you'll still take what someone else gave you and you'll tweak it to better fit your lifestyle or your process and your flow. What are those systems that allow you to automate, to put you in position to be able to replicate and duplicate what it is that you're doing? And then support. Who's supporting you? In a direct sales company, we know it starts with our family and making sure that they understand that on nights and weekends, we might not be available because we're selling our product or our service, right? Eventually, it might be team members. I remember when I was a Mary Kay sales director, I had an executive assistant. She packaged my orders. She put my inventory away. She did all of those things. That was what was supporting me. So we look at, again, success mindset, strategy, sales, system, and support. So inside of the book, I lay out our entire framework that has not worked just for me. But to date, we have created $40 million CEOs leveraging this very same framework. And so I share it with you. I share with anybody who has millions on their mind because I don't believe you have to work hard for money. I believe that if you believe you have to work hard for money, then you cannot make money unless you work hard. I believe that your actions will always follow your beliefs. And I believe that financial success or any kind of success, it is not about hard work. It is actually about being in alignment. Who must I be? How am I being and becoming the best version of myself to set myself on a trajectory to not only get what it is that I desire, but to be the impact that other people get to experience when I be it, when I am it right now and I'm showing up in the world that way. And so the book really lays out the entire framework and methodology and gives insights as well as worksheets and activities that anybody who wants to make millions can do in order to get their business to the million dollar mark. I love that. And how are people, uh, so first of all, when does the book come out? So it is on pre-order right now. It officially releases November 7th. So if you order the book right now, it will arrive to you the week of November the 7th. If you order it now, you can go to our website, movetomillionsbook.com and enter your order number and we'll send you some bonuses. Um, And you'll also get to come to our virtual launch party that we're holding in November. Uh, And you can buy it wherever you buy books. So Amazon, Target, Walmart, Barnes and Noble, and independent bookstores. It's everywhere. Fantastic. So people can pre-order. So even if this episode comes out early in the fall, go pre-order, go to movetomillionsbook.com. Correct. Put in your order number so they know that you pre-ordered the book and you're going to get all these uh, wonderful bonus uh, items in addition to the book that will arrive in November. That is um, correct. But then you're also have you also have been kind enough to offer another gift for mm-hmm. the Badass Crew, which is the Move to Millions Method. Tell me about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the Move to Millions Method, is it's really powerful because it's not just the framework, the the five I just laid out for you, success mindset, strategy, sales, systems, and support, but it is also an assessment and a step-by-step process to begin your own move to millions. So in in the the method came before the book, so it's the perfect companion to give you something to have access to until you get your book in November. Ah, love it. Oh my gosh, that is fantastic. So We have the link in the show notes for all of these. We're going to put in the link for the place where you can get the book. We're going to put in the link for where you can get the bonuses for pre-ordering the book and also the link to the Move to Millions method as well. So it's in the show notes. If this is your first time listening to the show and you're like, show notes, what are those? All you have to do, grab your phone. As long as you're not driving, click on today's episode, scroll just below Dr. Darnielle's beautiful picture, and you will see all of the links there to connect to Dr. Darnielle, as well as all of the links to what we've talked about, the book, the bonuses, and the Move to Millions method uh, that she's offering for our badass crew right here. So Dr. Darnielle, if people want to connect with you, 
where would you like them to connect with you? Yeah, I'm probably most active on Instagram. So I'm at Darnell Jervy Harmon. I love it. And we also, of course, have that link in the show notes. <laughs> so you don't have to try and figure out how to spell all of that. Just go click on the link and you can go follow her on Instagram. So oh, another fantastic conversation. Thank you so much for being here for my audience. I so appreciate you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited that I got an opportunity to chat with you today. Oh my gosh, this has been fantastic. And Badass Crew, you know how this goes. Stay tuned because there's another Badass episode on its way. Thanks for listening to the Badass Direct Sales Mastery Podcast with your direct sales dom, Jenny Bellinger. Why are you waiting to go to badassdirectsalesmastery.com? Don't make the dom get her whip. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to share it with another rock star that you know in direct sales after you subscribe to the podcast so you won't miss any future episodes. You can also check out the show notes for links and any contact information mentioned in today's episode. We'll see you next time.